Rub up your engines! First question is Damien. Scotty, what's your thoughts on a 2017 Range Rover Sport with only 40,000 miles? It has no issues. How long do you think it can last? Not a Range Rover fan. They are one of the biggest money pit vehicles in the world. Depends where you are. If you're in England, hey, you get one with a diesel engine, it might last quite some time. You're in America, you buy one of their gasoline engine ones, endless freaking money pits. China makes some of them. Tata, the Indian company, owns them. Part of the Chinese company owns them. And it was so bad, in quotations, communist. China. The Chinese revolted against them and had a big protest in front of their headquarters in China and said, these quality are so bad, why are you selling these things to us? And this is people in a communist country complaining about quality. So that says something. Passy New 835 says, I need help. I'm thinking about buying a 2005 Honda Pilot. It's an original owner. It's got 154,000 miles and won $5,800. They said they didn't know if the timing belt's ever been changed. And I got them down to 4800 bucks. That is a V6 interference engine. So they don't know. They means it probably has never been changed. Change the timing belt if you're going to buy because that destroys the engine, right? Probably going to cost you a thousand bucks or so. Timing belt, water pump, pulleys because you don't want it breaking that destroys the engine Then it's pretty much a useless vehicle. Got 154,000 miles. Before you do anything, pay a guy like me to check it out. We are machines. We can go through it. I can tell you from working on Hondas for 50 something years, this is good. No, it's bad. Oh, and depending where you live, you didn't say where you live. Look under there. Get a hammer. If it's all rusted, don't buy it. It's a rust bucket. If it's not rusted and the mechanic says it's good, you got them down to 4800 bucks. But you got to get it checked out. They are very complex. They can last a really long time. Once you get it checked out, if it's okay, yeah. But if you do buy it, you got to change the timing belt right away. Because if it breaks, you're screwed. Then you got a useless vehicle that doesn't run and you wasted 4800 bucks. Mix, my dad said, my rear brake dust shield fell off on a 2010 Prius. It's just a dust shield. That's all it does. Right? It probably rusted if you live up north where they use salt. If you want to buy another one and bolt it on, if not, leave it off. I've had many cars and many customers with cars that they rusted away from being up north. I just took them off and left them off. Doesn't really do all that much. Just a thin little sheet of metal. You don't really need it. And if it did break off because it was rusted, that would mean the bolts would be rusted in. And they'd break when you tried to take them off to bolt the new one on. So I just say, leave the stupid thing alone. Doesn't really do much of anything. Sir Franklin said, Morning, Scotty. If you had to buy a used 2500 pickup truck, what brand would you go for? Thanks. If I was getting a 2500 truck, I would get a GMC 2500 because the GMC 2500s are so much better built than the Silverado 1500s that if you had to get one, I wouldn't buy one. But if you did, I'd get the 2500 GMC. The GMC 2500s are a lot better built than the GM 1500 Silverados. I know that from a fact. Ask any real truck guy about modern trucks and they'll tell you the same thing. Now you go back to 2000 and 90s, they were all making pretty good trucks, but GM's quality has been going downhill for quite some time. But they kept the GMC up because that's a commercial grade. And if you sell crappy trucks to commercial guys, guess what? They won't buy another one. By a AC guy in Tennessee, right? He made the mistake of buying a late model Silverado 1500. He said it was the worst thing he ever had. But since then, he's bought two GMC 2500s that he loves. Same company, but GMC 2500s are better. Evan Smith says, do you know anything about second generation Toyota timing cover leak? Yeah, a lot of them get a little timing cover leak there. To fix it right, you got to take the whole engine apart. Very expensive endeavor. If it's just a little leak, live with it. As long as it's not dripping on an alternator or anything, it isn't going to hurt anything. A lot of them do it because they didn't seal them correctly. The only way you're going to actually seal it correctly is by taking it all apart, resealing it, and putting it all back together. Again. But if it's only a little leak, what the heck? Check the oil every once in a while. You know, it's not that big of a deal, but if you want to fix it, it is a big expensive deal to stop it from leaking. And there's no sealers that'll stop that. Sealers like AT205 Reseal can stop oil seals that are round seals that a shaft spins in it. But in your case, it's the cover, and that's just either glued on or has a gasket, and no sealer helps that. You'd have to take it apart and fix it. If it was the crank seal or the cam seals, yes. AT205 could help it, but it won't help that one. That was just a design flaw. Haji says, are engines with more than eight cylinders practical? Not really. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, just yesterday on Friday, I had a guy come from Rochester, New York, and he bought me his Audi that had the V10 engine. 
right? Now, this particular one, it was a good engine. It had 165,000 miles. It still ran like a top, didn't burn oil. But the reason I originally went to V10, V12, to get more power out of more cylinders, right? But they pollute more. They're tremendous gas hogs. For what you used to get in a V12, like a Jaguar V12 engine, you can get that same horsepower out of a four-cylinder engine. Modern technology has moved on. And these multi-cylinder stuff, they're only going to be in oddball cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Oh, hey, we got the 300,000 thousand dollar car four hundred thousand dollar car oh it's got the v12 engine it's all technology right but you know rich they only go by there's the name oh, i'm in my lamborghini yeah well who cares really you know you look like an idiot to me <laughs> you get a four-cylinder engine it puts out a lot of horsepower too you don't need that big monstrosity and they're all being phased out the audi v10 i was talking about they're phasing them out next year that one they won't make them anymore it's in the past you don't even need v8s anymore but people like the rumbling noise of v8 and for pulling and towing it it does make sense. Daniel Nicholas Leon Murillo says, Scotty, I've been saving up for a car. I want to get an older Honda or Toyota. What would you recommend? Well, the one you can get at the best price that has the lowest mileage. <laughs> okay, now, what do you want? You want a little car? Either get a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla. They've sold millions of them. Millions of millions of millions of them, right? If you want a bigger car, get a Toyota Camry or a Honda Accord. Those are good. And just look around. See what's out there. Yeah, you said older, so those are the things that last over time. I would not advise to get an older one that has a CVT. Those are more modern, but you still could get a high mileage one. I would not buy either of them used with the CVT. But most of them don't have CVTs when you're talking about the older ones. So look at the Civics, Corollas, or Camrys, and Accords. Those are the best ones out there. Christopher Flory says, Scotty, got no 7 Cadillac Escalade 6.2 liter. Oil keeps making its way into the air intake system through the passenger valve cover. I change most valve covers and it still happens. Well, if your PCV valve is stuck, it'll do that. It'll blow it through. So change that. But if it's not that, I got bad news for you, baby. Your engine's wearing out. Pistons have piston rings to seal the pressure inside the engine. There are compression rings for the compression, but under that are oil control rings. When your oil control rings wear out, then the pressure of the piston compression rings pushes down the oil control rings are now worn pushes oil into the system and then it'll get inside into your intake and you'll start sucking oil in. and knowing a cadillac engines you probably just have a worn out engine and the problem with that is you can't even figure it out with a compression test because let's say your compression rings are good there in the top it'll have plenty of compression dude it'll look great compression but you can't really test the oil control rings they're on the bottom side and when they're worn that's exactly what happens oil gets thrown into the system so odds are your engine's worn out. I'm assuming if you bought it used, the previous owner didn't change the oil enough, or they believe the horse manure that they tell them and change the oil every 10 or 12,000 miles instead of every five, and then the engines wear out faster. A lot of guys buy Calex. They're doing it for an image. They don't even maintain the car. Oh, I had a customer in my father's garage back in the 70s. He had Cadillacs. He never even changed the oil. He said, I trade him in every two years. I don't care. They all burn oil when he got rid of them, but he didn't give a crap because he traded them in every two years. Tracy Baltzazar says, Scotty, I got 2016 Corolla. It has not had the transmission fluid change yet with 104,000 miles. Should I go ahead or is it too late? Go ahead. The Toyota transmissions are different than the American ones. They really don't shed clutch materials inside and you can change the fluid now. I had a guy with one that had 200,000 miles. It was never touched. It was black. I changed it. He didn't have any problems. Toyotas don't have problems like that. If it was a Chrysler or Ford GM, I'd say no, don't touch it. You're gambling. You're rolling a dice and you might crap out and then it slips and doesn't work at all. But with the Toyota, no. Go ahead and change it. Just make sure you use the Toyota fluid because when you take the fluid out with the drain plug or even drop the pan, still a little more than half of the fluid is left inside the torque converter and the tranny. So you don't want to mix fluids. Buy the Toyota original fluid and use that. Clint Albrecht says, is a Hemi a good engine? It's dinosaur technology. Hemi stands for hemispherical combustion chamber. It's hemispherical. It's more efficient. Well, this was, you know, 70, 80 years ago. It was a radical idea. It is not anymore. They put out a tremendous amount of power. Yes, but they are also tremendous gas hogs and the newer ones wear out faster because originally the crankshaft on the bottom would throw oil when you're idling and at low speeds up to get the camshaft and it would lubricate it. But then some engineering clown said, let's put more horsepower. Some of those things put out 750 horsepower now. So they moved the cam up higher. 
Well, now the cam was so high that it idled in low speeds. The oil didn't splash and lubricate the cams, and the cams all wear out, and you got to rebuild the engine. So, maybe not such a great idea over time. A lot of power when they start out, they don't hold up like they used to. And after all, it's a dinosaur design. It's from ages ago, and Chrysler's just living on their laurels. They might as well say, All right, there, Sonny Boy, we got an internal combustion engine here instead of a horse pulling you around. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.